Welcome to iLecture Online and here's another example of how to use implicit differentiation to solve for the derivative of a uh, hmm, kind of an interesting function here. Try as you may, if you try to solve this for y in terms of x alone, you're not going to be able to do that. You're not going to be able to write it somehow, uh, algebraically manipulating this, as y equals some function of x. You cannot do that in this particular case. So if someone asks you to find the derivative of y with respect to x of that, the only way to do that is to use implicit differentiation, which means you're going to take the derivative with respect to x of both sides of the equation. So watch this. We take the ddx, that's one way of saying I'm taking the derivative with respect to x of the left side of the equation. and set that equal to the derivative with respect to x of the right side of the equation. Okay, so let's do that. Now notice that here we have an x squared times y, that's a product, so we're going to have to use a product rule here. So this is equal on the left side, uh, the first, x squared, times the derivative with respect to x of y, which is simply dy dx plus the second y times the derivative of the first and the d dx of x squared is 2x times dx dx but I'm not going to write that anymore so it's 2x to the first power times the derivative of x with respect to x which is dx over dx and of course dx over dx is 1 alright so we have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first minus the derivative of this product and I'm going to use brackets here so we take the first, which is y squared, times the derivative of the second, which is 3x squared, times the derivative of x, which is dx dx, which is 1, so we want to write that, plus the second, which is x cubed, times the derivative of y squared, which is 2y, times the derivative of y with respect to x, which is dy dx. That's where this dy dx comes from. All right, so I think we did this right, so we have the derivative of this, which is the first times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first, minus, that's this minus here, the derivative of this, which is also a product, so it's the first times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first, and that equals the derivative of the right side, and the derivative of a constant is zero. Okay, here's where things are a little bit different now. Since we're looking for dy dx, we have to algebraically solve this thing here, getting a little ugly here, but solve this whole thing for dy dx and notice, I'll use my red pen, there's two d's. There's a dy dx over here and there's a dy dx over here. So algebraically we have to solve for dy dx, which means that we'll have to isolate the dy dx. Uh, one way to do that would be to put all the terms that have a dy dx on the left side and all the terms that do not have a dy dx on the right side, the equal sign. So let's start with that. So here we have an x squared dy dx, so we'll leave that on the left side of the equation, x squared times dy dx. Uh, let's put our equal sign here. The next term, which is uh, 2x times y, we can move that to, to the other side, that becomes a minus 2xy. Okay, then we have a minus y squared 3x squared, so that can move to the other side. The minus then becomes plus, so plus the number first, the x term first, or the x first, x squared, and the y squared there. All right, so we move the minus 3x squared y squared to the right, becomes a plus 3x squared y squared. And finally, the fourth term here, uh, that has a dy dx in it, so I want to move, oh, don't want to move it, it's already on the left side of the equation, so I want to leave it there, but don't forget the minus, when I apply it there, we get minus 2x cubed y times dy dx. And that equals everything on the right side of the equation. All right, now the next step would be to factor out a dy dx on the left side, so then we get dy dx times, we have an x squared here, minus 2x cubed y. And that equals, I'm now bringing the equal sign over here, the right side of the equation, which is a minus 2xy plus 3x squared y squared. 
And then the final part of the problem is to take the coefficient, the item that's multiplied times the dy dx, and move it to the other side. And a better way to do that is divide both sides of the equation by this x squared minus 2x cubed y equals, do the same to the right side, 2xy plus 3x squared y squared. Also divide this by x squared minus 2x cubed y. So you can see here that what I did was divide the left side by this and divide the right side by the exact same thing. This cancels out and now I have isolated dy dx. So finally I can write that my dy dx which means the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to minus 2xy plus 3x squared y squared divided by x squared minus 2x cubed y. And that is the derivative of y with respect to x of my original function. So, as was pointed out to me, I can simplify this. Because if I look at the numerator, I can factor out a y, I can factor out an x. If I look in the denominator, I can factor out an x squared. So if you want to write it in a simpler algebraic form, you say, well, this is equal to, uh, let's see, factor out an x and factor out a y. So that would be x times y times, we have what left here, a minus 2 and a plus 3xy. In the denominator, I can factor out an x squared, and that will leave me with a 1 minus 2xy. And then you can see that this x cancels out one of those in the denominator. So ultimately, in its simplest form, and let me then go over here, kind of an unorthodox way to kind of move back up on the, on the whiteboard, but hey, it works. dy dx can then be written as, in the simple form, y times minus 2 plus 3xy divided by x times 1 minus 2xy. So, most teachers would like you to take this form and simplify it as much as possible. This is the correct answer, but obviously if you can write it in a simpler algebraic form, you definitely should do so. All right, so that's how you do differential or implicit differentiation on problems that look like that. Uh, I think we need to do a couple more examples like this, so let's, let's try to find some good ones.